The sensei is a sacred position. I could never violate the spiritual bond of the student-master relationship. Oh, then allow me. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Lois Griffin was an absolute psycho. Are you trying to get a rise out of me? Are you uh, at me now? Uh, is this what uh, you want? Oh no, it's not what I want. For this list, we'll be looking at the moments Mrs. Griffin was the most unhinged, irrational, and downright scary. What's your favorite Lois off the rails moment? Let us know in the comments. Hey Mojoholics, for a chance to win cash prizes, Play our live daily trivia challenges every day at 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern only at watchmojo.com slash play. Number 10. Shoplifting Obsession In a moment of weakness and recklessness, Lois Griffin steals a supermarket ham she can't afford. <sighs> oh my god, that was such a rush! This little act of deviance leads to more theft, swiping everything from clothes to fine art to mufflers. Hold it right there, Lois. You're under arrest. Oh, crap. All right, look, just just take it easy, Joe. All right, Lois will go peacefully. Oh, my God, I am so embarrassed. Let me just get my purse. <laughs> Sucker! Her kleptomania gets so out of hand, it temporarily lands her behind bars. But Peter helps her escape, and the Griffin family goes on the run, living in fear of getting caught. Lois realizes that her crimes have seriously impacted their lives and wisely turns herself in. Joe! Joe, you're too heavy! I can't hang on! Pretend I'm your child, Lois! Not Meg! Not Meg! She may have done the right thing in the end, but man, she really went over the line. It's hard to believe this wild series of events all began with a ham. Number 9. Attacking Peter for Getting Groceries we all know being Peter Griffin's wife is a tough job, so every time Lois loses all patience with his idiotic behavior, we're right there with her. In general, she's not a violent person, but when she's pushed to her limit and starts swinging, it's usually justified. Like when her husband almost wears blackface. That's a stupid idea. What? It's a stupid idea! You're a stupid man! A stupid, stupid man! Ow! You're hurting me! Stop it! Stop it, Lois! No! I'm so sick of your crap! One of Peter's biggest mistakes is actually intended to be helpful. He brings home groceries, thinking he's done his hard-working wife a favor. What he doesn't expect is Lois's instant rage. You listen to me, you son of a bitch. I've got one thing in this lifetime. One thing! <laughs> you always say I never do anything around here. Yeah, I like saying that more than I like you doing things. She tackles him and gets in a few punches before directing the same anger towards Chris when he tries to carry in more bags. It's safe to say that they learn their lesson. Groceries are her thing. That's right. I do groceries. Number 8. Full-time housewife, part-time brawler. Gloria, this is my life partner, Lois. I'm his wife. His wife? Yes. Peter tells me you don't have a career of your own. Oh, no. Life outside my kitchen is so bright and scary. Lois certainly didn't marry Peter for his sensitive nature, but she knows he has a good heart and usually tolerates his casual misogyny. The same can't be said for his female co-workers one of whom takes legal action for his inappropriateness. I represent one of your co-workers, Sarah Bennett. She's suing you and the company for sexual harassment. Sarah, Sarah. I don't... Oh, she the one we videotaped taking a dump? To avoid a lawsuit, lawyer Gloria Ironbox sends Peter to a women's retreat to learn sensitivity. He returns a changed man, but Lois grows frustrated with his new personality. When they meet, Gloria undermines Lois's choice to be a housewife and blames her for Peter's disrespect towards women. But when she mentions the kids, Lois goes off and punches her right in the face. You bitch. This leads to an all-out brawl with the Griffin matriarch coming out on top. Number 7. Peter Pad Prisoners when Peter turns the attic into a 24-hour frat party, he unsurprisingly neglects household chores, leaving everything to Lois, as always. What are you doing up here? I need you to take the trash out. You know what? I'm gonna use this Peter doesn't have to take out the trash coupon that I got for my anniversary. You gave that to yourself. I don't know, it says official. Even from the attic, he still manages to cause destruction to the house and make life harder for his wife. 
Lois gets fed up with his nonsense and decides to power drill the door closed, trapping Peter, Joe, Cleveland, and Quagmire in their man cave. Fine. You like the damn attic so much? Then enjoy the attic! Did, did she just lock us in here? It looks like it. Guys, yeah, spin me back. I didn't see what happened. Considering the guys ripped out the insulation and they seemingly have no food or water, keeping them locked up that long is a bit extreme. Lois doesn't release them until her wedding dress is at risk of being defiled. You'll leave my dress alone, Peter. If it'll get us out of here, I'll make a duty on it. What are you nuts? I've been crowning for six hours. Cleveland's pants are off, Lois. Here come mine. This is happening. Lois, they're not bluffing. Open the door. I miss Bonnie. At least she's aware of the craziness of the situation in the end. Number 6. Kicking her family out of the house In this episode, Lois's latest obsession is decluttering the entire house. Following Trisha Takanawa's book, Throw It Away, what begins as a harmless project turns into a delusional attempt to have the perfect minimalist home. I just read Trisha Takanawa's book and it was really inspiring. She says that when you declutter your house, you declutter your mind and clear a path to true happiness. Lois gets into a cleaning frenzy, tossing out everything and eventually everyone. If it doesn't kindle joy, then it has to go, including her husband and kids. Shut up, Meg. Well, I didn't say anything. You just did. Your voice, it's cluttering up my space. Get out. But get out of my house. Once she's left completely alone in a white void, Lois realizes she's still nowhere near being happy. She has a meltdown that ultimately leads to her joyously rolling around in trash. Everything's fine. I was saved by garbage. I'm garbage. Everything's garbage and garbage is wonderful. Uh, when mommy's unstable, I feel unsafe. It's not unusual for Family Guy characters to seamlessly go from one extreme to another, but seeing Lois's journey from obsessive clean freak to literally calling herself garbage is hilarious. Number 5. Lois vs. the New York Leafers Tired of constantly being undermined and overlooked, Lois joins a taijutsu class. She quickly makes it into the advanced class and masters the craft, gaining skills that fuel her with power she's never known. Excuse me, we were about to use that. You snooze, you lose, lady. You have two choices. Either my baby swings from this jungle gym, or you do. Ooh, Lewis. Someone's wearing their ovaries on the outside. She saw me walk into the swing. Yes, yes, she saw you. Easy now. We see her new confidence in action when she casually threatens a mom on the playground. Much to Stewie's delight. But it's a visit to the drunken clam that elicits the most kickassery. Excuse me, New Yorker. I think you're in my seat and I had sex with your mother last night. Peter, are you crazy? What did you say? Oh, about the sheep or about my plow and your father's wife? Hey, ooh. What the hell are you doing? Unsurprisingly, Peter takes full advantage of his wife's new fighting abilities and provokes invasive, out of town patrons. Though she hesitates at first, Lois takes them all out with ease, including Kryptonians. Krypton sucks. Mm -hmm. all right. oh, at her black belt graduation, she challenges the instructor, initiating the first blow and defeating him with her powerful fists of female fury. Yeah! Oh, that was amazing. Congrats. This is mine. This is where my babies come from. Number 4. Review Revenge After returning home from a relaxing Nantucket getaway, Lois is already planning their next trip to the same fabulous Airbnb rental. But the homeowner's negative review accusing the Griffins of theft gets her banned from the app. Okay, which one of you little rats stole something from that house? And don't lie to me. I'm your mother. I can feel your lies in my ovaries. The doctor said those were cysts. From your lies? Even though she frantically apologizes in person and returns the shampoo she stole, Dottie doesn't change the review. Dottie, Dot, D. Look, I am on my back here. My legs are in the stirrups, forceps have been utilized, there was some sort of suction, and still that's not enough? Lois refuses to let Dottie decide her Airbnb fate and stalks her because, of course, she does. 
She then goes as far as becoming a DoorDash delivery driver just to put herself in a position to leave a damning review of her own. Really, I should be thanking you for reminding me of who I am. A secret little psycho with very little to lose. And there's a million of us out there, and you're just welcoming us all into your homes. Lois Griffin may be insane, but you can't say she isn't dedicated. Number 3. Sharing a Very Dark Secret with Chris While Peter has always been a reckless driver, it turns out Lois has caused a few accidents herself. Golden Eagle to Red Shrew. Ready for the plan? Come in, Red Shrew. Peter, we did not decide on those names. Chris, come down here, quick! I see Arthur Valentine outside. I think he's come to say hi! To convince Chris that Arthur Valentine doesn't exist, his parents stage a scene where the made-up character gets run over by a car. The trauma of seeing Arthur's death leaves Chris in a catatonic state. When Lois is by his side taking care of him, she inexplicably tells him about a pedestrian she killed years before. I've never told anyone this, but I killed a jaywalker in 2002. She looked old, but she was only 51. I mean, back then, that was old to me. The incident itself is disturbing, but Lois's nonchalance is even more so. Though we don't see this scene play out and only learn about it through a long overdue confession, it makes us wonder what else Lois is hiding in that creepy mind of hers. Maybe we don't want to know. Every mother has killed someone. Now drink your ginger ale. Number 2. Attempted Murder and Kidnapping If there's one thing we know about Lois, it's that she has a tendency to hyperfixate on the smallest things, especially if she thinks it gives her life meaning. Would you like to donate a cup of coffee to a soldier overseas? Yeah, that seems like a good cause. When she obsesses over becoming House of Brews Customer of the Week, she starts out being extra friendly to the staff. But another week goes by without the honor and she spirals out of control. I'll just pour some of these planters peanuts into Lisa's car. The official peanut of poisoning people with allergies. What? No, she's kidding. Come on, look at me. Top hat, gloves, shoes, no other clothes. I'm a good guy! Lois uses a barista's peanut allergy to create a situation where she can be a life-saving hero. Instead, the allergic reaction causes a horrible car accident, putting the girl in the hospital. Oh, shaving cream! Oh, shaving cream! Shaving cream! Lois kidnaps another employee who learns of the crime and then his roommates. You can't leave us like this, lady. You don't say lady. It makes me feel old. And why is everyone acting like this is my fault? If anything, it's Kyle H's fault. She obviously never gets the award, but she does get a jail sentence. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Choking a compliment out of Chris. Flattery only works on Lois if she approves. Yeah, you're ripped. You look like Madonna. <laughs> you want to say that again? Who do I look like? The mom from Modern Family. <laughs> That's right. Julie Bowen. That's the appropriate answer. Tackling her husband. Lois forcefully persuades Peter to attend Meg's play. Now, are you going to go to Meg's play or not? Yes! You like eating red carpet, tough guy? Yes! Say you like eating red carpet! I like eating red carpet! Giggity. Getting in the ring. A fun night out turns into Lois becoming a ruthless pro boxer. No matter what you do for the rest of your life, you'll always be garbage. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Holly Jolly Rampage It's Christmas for the Griffin family and of course, Lois is responsible for making sure everyone has a perfect holiday. She impressively maintains a cheery attitude throughout all the chaos, mishaps, and losses. But what sets her off is not having the products to clean up the latest catastrophe. Yeah, all right. yeah. We're out of paper towels. No paper towels! Ah! Hey, I was gonna pick at that. Shut your fat mouth! This sends Lois on a path of destruction through Quahog verbally and physically attacking anyone unlucky enough to be in her way, even Frosty the Snowman. Oh, take it off! Take it off! By the time she scales the town Christmas tree, the cops have been called. 
Lois has a moment of realization, but gets a tranquilizer dart before she can climb down on her own. Yeah, she's not getting it. Okay, boys, take her down. She spends the rest of the holiday completely zonked out, which is honestly for the best. We hope your freaking holidays are filled with fun and cheer. So have a Merry Christmas and... Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.